Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us on this uh, Altrincham Football Club YouTube premiere. Joining me today for the uh, for this club update is Director of Commercial Partnerships, Sam McKenzie. We've also got uh, John Coyne, who heads up Retail and Digital. Mark Luby, our Stadium uh, Director. And Rob Estever, who uh, looks after football operations. On Saturday, Altrincham Football Club plays one of its uh, biggest uh, and most important games of the 21st uh, century as we host uh, National League side FC Halifax Town in the uh, Isuzu FA Trophy semi-final. We're 90 minutes away from a potential return to Wembley Stadium for what would be our fourth visit uh, and the first in 37 years and the first, of course, to the new Wembley Stadium. So uh, to kick things off, um, Rob, how, how are preparations going? Well, no pressure after all that build-up, Brian. Um, <laughs> think things are good. Um, I'm happy with where we're at. Um, I'd have preferred not to have had the Notts County game scheduled for midweek, but that, you know, that was something that was out of our control. Um, so relatively pleased to come through that unscathed. Not happy with uh, uh, the result and uh, certain things going against us, which I won't go into, um, uh, which everybody's aware of. But uh, no, I was I was really pleased with how the lads acquitted themselves. We made a couple of changes. I mean, Phil, Phil referenced them in his post-match interview. A couple of little knocks and niggles, um, you know, and just, just, just playing it cautiously from that perspective. But, you know, we've got a strong squad. I'm really happy with the uh, squad numbers, the squad depth, the quality. Um, so it enabled us to put in a, a strong performance. And, and yeah, I mean, everyone's geared up for this. Um, you know, there is that, you know, I feel a buzz living in the town. You can feel the buzz. At Edgerton, you can feel the buzz at the ground, you can feel the buzz. So it, it, it's always been one match at a time, and it, it has to be uh, from a football perspective. But obviously, now we can uh, fully focus on this game and just give it everything that we've got. Um, I say one match at a time from a from a preparation perspective, but I think as everybody will recognise from a recruitment side of things, especially when we had quite a turn turnover of players. In, uh, in January especially, that we always had the trophy in mind, you know, ensuring players are eligible to play in this competition. You know, there was, there's only Regan right now that, that isn't. So, yeah, um, we've always had that in the back of our minds uh, and always known that with such a huge number of matches in these last couple of months and in this next month that um, we needed a strong squad. And, and yeah, happy with where we're at. And now uh, at least we can... Uh, Stop pretending we're not looking at that game and we can, yeah, certainly fully focus on it. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rob. Um, the 2-1 the win at York in the quarterfinal on um, the 11th of March was a, a fantastic occasion with magnificent turnout and support uh, throughout the match for multi-fans. And it was a day that really showed how important this competition is to supporters. And and since the semi-final draw was made on the Monday after, uh, after beating uh, York, there's been a real trophy fever online and at the club and around the town uh, around this game. So where where are we on uh, on, on ticket sales, John? Uh, there's a few hundred left, Brian. Uh, so we put them on sale on Friday the 17th to season ticket holders and loyalty members. And it was a, an immediate take up. Uh, they went on general sale the, the following day on the Saturday. Uh, and we we're already, I think, half the stadium was full. Uh, at that point, within within 24 hours, so that they flew off the shelves. Hospitality sold out within a record two hours, um, mm. which is I know we've had some 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 really busy hospitality days over the last few years post COVID, but th this was unbelievable. It was it was done within two hours, um, and they've steadily the, the ticket sales have steadily uh, continued since. I'd say as of this morning, Golf Road completely sold out. Top side, okay availability. That's where most of the availability is. Uh, main stand, pretty much, uh, you know, last few remaining. So uh, we don't expect to, you know, to, for the game to not be all ticket. That that will remain in place, and I imagine we will get close to, if not completely, sell out by the end of the week. Fantastic! Uh, 
it's all uh, all rocking there by uh, by the sounds of it. Um, Mark, um, you're a, a a local boy and have a a long history with uh, Altrincham Football Club as a supporter. What does um, this uh, competition, the FA Trophy, mean to you? Uh, I, I think probably childhood memories. The first time that we got there, I was 11 at school in Simply. Um, I remember after we won it, they actually brought the trophy into school to the players. I can't remember who they were. It's a long time ago. But I just remember how big it, I thought it was at the time, but I was only 11. Um, but I remember that 10-year period when we got to Wembley three times, and you, know, you will as well. I'm sure anybody under 45 probably won't do, but... I remember the coaches on the day, there seemed to be hundreds of coaches everywhere lining up on the main street, outside the old station, um, every shop window, dressed with scarves and shirts. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. So that's what I remember. Um, and I think it means a lot. And we're we'll obviously all looking at uh, Saturday, holding our breath and hoping we can do it because, like I say, the younger people who won't remember that, if the same thing happens again, it'll be, it'll be incredible. Right, great, fantastic, uh, fantastic memories uh, there. And hopefully we're going to create a few more in the very near future. Um, many of the fans, players, management staff and volunteers are a little bit uh, superstitious about speaking about the big W word. But are there any special uh, merchandise or, or products uh, available around this uh, trophy uh, run, John? Well, I, I'm very similar. I haven't, I haven't thought post Saturday to be fair, because I think we do have, if we are, if we're lucky enough to to get through Saturday, we do have a decent window. I think six weeks. Um, so almost certainly there will be there will be something special. Um, as of yet, we, we we're trying to not tempt fate. We're trying not to think about it. Um, had had the get had the final been a couple of weeks after, we, we'd have had to have been organised. We'd have had to have made. Yeah, investigative uh, inroads with our suppliers on, on what was possible but yeah as of yet just just don't want to tempt fate so I'm, I'm sure there will be but uh, kind of we'll worry about it at, at, at five o'clock on Saturday should we need to fantastic okay um we've got a number of uh, exciting uh, events uh lined up and um one of which is the uh, end of season uh, awards dinner on um sunday april uh, the 30th uh, samantha it's time to bring you in uh, i assume this one's got your fingerprints all over it uh and, and other people's uh, i won't take full um so the the view was taken uh the, the conversation started about how we can really celebrate the end of season um, obviously, we're not talking about W yet, so so we're not going to go down there. But um, just really in terms of having gone full time, uh, the commitment that, that, you know, the players have shown, Phil's working hard. Obviously, the team uh, are doing exceptionally well. They've hit the ground running. Uh, the fans have come with us. We've had amazing gates, as we've all talked about. It's been a success story. And you felt it was already building. Like Rob said, I live locally. Um, I'm around the club a lot, lucky enough to go to Edgerton uh, for, for various different reasons, as I know you are, Brian. And there's just been a really great buzz. And I think we've come through COVID, which I know that feels like it could have been like 10 years, four years, five minutes. Uh, and we did a couple of end of seasons and they were in the sports hall and they were great. And obviously everybody's celebrating and stuff. But I happened to be at Edgerton. I think Robert was there as well. And we were talking to Phil. And we did just have a conversation about how can we go for it and really do a fantastic celebration at the end of the season. So we happened upon, Phil was really, really, um, you know, inputting into the chat. He got a lot to say about it. And we sort of decided that it'd be great to do something that was celebratory. Uh, we can reach out to, you know, to fans, do it differently. And sometimes change feels a little bit like, oh, we haven't done that before. But actually, change can be a great thing. We can start making new memories. We can bring new additions to the to the format, if you will. So it's not formal, but there's an air of formality about it because I think that that shows that we are acknowledging, um, in a really good way, the successes, the achievements, uh, the people that are part of the football club, the volunteers, um, as I said, the team, the people that work around, the people that come, the fans, the goals. Really, just a a, a different format. Um, it's going to be really great. There'll be some super food. 
you know we've really got you know great food going on now at the um at the club and we're still trying to move that model still trying to evolve that so there'll be some great food some drinks some good fun maybe a little bit of shimmy shimmy i don't know maybe get rob up on the dance floor um you know just have a really good time there's jonathan's ticket well placed jonathan got mine yeah so um yeah it was it was in conjunction with phil it did start a little bit with my kind of sticky fingerprints but honestly everybody the board are, you know on board the fans i've spoken to are really excited the players are really excited uh so i think it's something to look forward to and it'll punctuate the end of season which i always think is a good landmark moment to to have um, and to make sure everybody's noticed everybody in and around the club will be celebrated so you included brian Thank you. And, and we have done one of these uh, before, but it's a long, long time ago. 2011 was the, the last time that we had an end of season awards uh, dinner, which was at the, the, the Cresta Court. And of course, we've now got the community, community sports hall, which enables us to uh, hold big events like uh, this uh, at uh, at the club, which is is great for lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of reasons. On the, on the same day, um, Jake Malt has his uh, richly deserved testimonial and there's already been a number of ulti legends around announced rather for uh, for that day um how how are we getting on with uh, with preparations for this special event to celebrate Jake's superb uh, career at uh, ulti Rob uh, can you take that one well, firstly, you will not find me on the dance floor on the 29th. I'll be, I might prop the bar up, but that's as close <laughs> as I'm going to get. We'll see, Robert. We'll see. Not a chance, Sam. Not a <laughs> chance. Um, yeah, preparations for Jake's testimonial is going really well. It's all ramping up now. You know, we're what, around four weeks away from that. Um, we've had a couple of good meetings. Uh, Neil Faulkner's kind of leading that with Jake. Um, and we've had a couple of good catch ups with Jake. Um, Who's uh, obviously very busy at, at Buxton and, and with a day job, and but you know I know he's really looking forward to coming back. Um, and and there's some really good names as well that are lined up um, to come back that day. Uh, some playing, a lot of them, most of them playing, but some might not be able to play necessarily, but they'll certainly be turning up. Obviously, the EFL season finishes the week after. So there might be a couple that are with EFL teams that might not be able to play necessarily, but they'll certainly be there. Um, and yeah, there'll be more announcements. I think we're rolling out announcements uh, every week now. Uh, some really good names. Um, and yeah, with the Bay Festival in operation, that game too. I think it, you know, it's got all the, it's got the recipe for a really good day um, with the end of season awards later that night. So hopefully we need a sunny day first and foremost. Uh, it's looking a bit grim outside at the minute, but we've got a we've got a bit of time. Got some great legends coming, and and yeah, obviously we want to make it a special day for Jake and and his family. Um, I've seen there's a great program that's been currently being put together. I've already seen one great article um, that John Edwards has done, um, an interview with his brother. Um, so yeah, if you haven't got your ticket, I definitely recommend grabbing one soon. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to celebrate the day with Jake. Excellent, excellent. And it'll be great to see uh, Jake and <clears throat> lots of uh, popular faces uh, back at uh, at the Jay Davidson uh, Stadium. Um, last week, we announced the, uh, the Beer Festival taking place over that final uh, weekend of the league season at the end of next month. So it's going to be a really, really busy year. Uh, Time there's uh, there's plenty of exciting uh, things happening at uh, at the ground. Sam, can you uh, tell us about the beer festival and what we've got uh, lined up for this uh, very important uh, event? Yeah, so that's the um, starting at twenty eighth. I think it's going to kick off at four o'clock on Friday the twenty eighth, running through the the weekend as as Rob was saying. Um, it's it's going to be a really good. Uh, local we know we're using local breweries we're using local people so the beers i could talk about beers i have written them down cloud water for the moment we've got uh a gin and prosecco uh marston's are participating who have uh our, 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 the brewery we use stubborn mule um the big thing for us is food as well we're going to do quite a lot of food a lot of different sort of vibe going on obviously they'd be our, our food the things that, that, that we do well at altering them uh, we've got a little red pizza company coming in the curry den 
ice creams, uh, you know, and a lot more. There's a few still to be finalised, but it's really going to sort of take over the ground. So it's not going to be centred in one space. You're going to be able to walk around, get a good feel. There's activities going on on the pitch. So we're going to be doing um, various different sports. There's a tug of war. So everybody get yourselves ready for that one. That'll be good fun, um, putting in local teams for that one. Um, bouncy castles for the children. So the idea is that we're really kind of bringing Altrincham to us, uh, showing what we've got to offer. Uh, you know, come on, have a good time. Um, you know, walk around the ground. There's, there'll be lots to do, lots to entertain. All age groups um, focused around beer, uh, but 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 so much more than that. You know, it's really exciting. Going to big raffles, some competitions. It'll just be a really good fun. You know, no fun couple of days. One of the bands we've got live music. So there's going to be a stage put up. That's going to be exciting. Um, the Camdens are the lead group. They're well known, I believe, around the area. Um, I think I have seen them actually in Ultra and previously. So that's going to be something. Um, live DJs, um, a dance troupe are coming. There's going to be craft stalls for children, um, DJs, all sorts of stuff. Real kind of festival vibe. I mean, festival, obviously, beer festival, but but more than that, you know, um, but come with an open mind and come with a lot more to see. So it, it is going to be really great. Well, obviously, as I say, reaching out to the local community, want them to come along with us, come and have a fun time. Um, and it's, it's going to have something for everybody, definitely. And with the live music, we may get Rob having it, you know. I mean, it's going to happen, Robert, that weekend. And we're going to get pictures. Who has the seats? Good Rob. luck. Good luck. I tell you what, that could be the competition. Who gets a quick shot over that weekend? The whole duration. Who gets Mr. Esteva da picture? You will, you will be doing it, Robert. <laughs> well, I might dance on Saturday. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. It all sounds wonderful. So, so, so what else do we have uh, scheduled for that final week of the season, Simon, that's usually earmarked for so many activity, different activities at the ground? Yeah, it's a, it's a really, we've done it quite successfully the last, well, since I've been joining. Uh, the, the week, obviously, people that are aware, so the, the games finish and we have a week where we can utilise the pitch. Um, I've always said it, it's one of the biggest assets we've got, along with the players, the team, everything. I mean, it's obviously we all know the investment that went into it. So during the season, we are um, precious is the wrong word. It's, it's appropriate. We treat it appropriately. So um, we're very cautious about who does and doesn't go on. Uh, but for the week when the games finish, um, we do allow access to various different activities. So we have juniors coming on again. So wonderful juniors tournaments are taking place. So that's, um, you know, local kids um, in their hundreds. We did it last year. It's a really successful kind of event. Um, the kids love it. Uh, tournaments going on, they're playing on, the, on, on you know, on, on the first team, Altrincham Football Club, you know, at the J. Davidson Stadium. So it's super exciting. We've got 200 school children coming on the Monday. Uh, Monday the 24th, the community are running a great schools tournament for us. So that, again, is something giving back to the community, uh, the locality. Uh, they're all really looking forward to getting on the pitch. Um, I'm doing the usual corporate five-a-side, which is the 27th, Thursday. I think our Mr Mark Luby's got a couple of teams currently polishing your boots. Um, I saw him chatting with Phil, actually, the other day. Did hear for a few tips and directions, so uh, Mark's going to put a team in. That's always great fun. Probably got 12 teams, again, pitch split up. There's beers afterwards and some food. That's a great day. And for me, it's a really great event to springboard off more relationships, corporate relationships. We found a couple of really successful ones. Uh, we've got business club people coming from it. So, you know, commercially, that, that's a really good stream for, for the club. But we've balanced it with the commerciality and the, you know, local community giving back and allowing access to uh, the schools and juniors. Um so, yeah, it's a, it's a great way. The Academy are getting a game on. Um, that's just TBC. I think they're just awaiting their opponent maybe uh, at the moment. But that's great. Again, fantastic to see the lads have a game on there. Uh, and then on the Monday, so obviously then we've got Jake, we've got the beer festival. Uh, and then on the Monday the 1st, which is the bank holiday, we are very hopeful to get a women's game on there. So that's great. We did that last season uh, and we really want to support that. So, you know, for me personally, it's a great week, Brian. Absolutely. It's a hard Long week, the volunteers really kind of come up trumps. We all muck in on that one. Um, it's hard work, but it's really extremely fulfilling. Uh, and it springboards off from having the juniors uh, at the South End game uh, for those of the, well, uh, we were all there. There was 110 junior 
uh, children, of our Altrincham Football Club juniors walking around the pitch at half time to get a celebratory round of applause. Um, and I can tell you that that it was hard work. Well done, the juniors, for getting that over the line. Um, they executed that brilliantly well. It couldn't have happened without the volunteer, the coaches, the time and effort they put in. is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and they were buzzing. I saw all the children before they were buzzing. A few had got trophies with them. And hopeful, you know, we want to continue to do that. Again, you know, celebrate, acknowledge and appreciate all the work, uh, you know, that goes into running those sorts of, of things. So, um, you know, that that it was great. So, yes, it's, it's, it's a big week, but it's embracing all aspects of, of what goes on and around uh, the football club. Uh, so thanks, Brian. Yeah, that was sorry. I went on a little then. Didn't I? But it's very exciting. I love it. <laughs> so in a nutshell, Sam, there it is, eh? But then, so, right. right. <laughs> Looking ahead to the uh, the summer, um, which we, we need to do in terms of our planning, uh, I, pres I presume, uh, Rob, that plans are well underway for pre season, and, and and whilst Saturday and the remainder of this season is clearly the priority, you must be thinking about recruitment and our second season as a full time club. Yeah, I mean, th there's quite a bit. Of scenario planning that's already taken place ahead of this game on Saturday because if the if the season gets extended three weeks there's you know there's all kinds of ramifications in terms of training and so on. Um so there's there's a fair bit of work that's already happened and that will intensify obviously next week depending on which way it goes. Um yeah one of the, one of the key reasons I think we were promoted during that COVID season from the north into this division was through the playoffs was how we planned uh, when we kind of return to play. And that's going to be really important again for us, whether it's for the 21st of May, whether it's for the start of pre-season next year. Um, there's going to be a lot of work involved um, making sure whenever we play um, that we're absolutely ready and absolutely fine-tuned, which I think we've done successfully in the past. Um, plans for next season, ongoing all the time. Um, you know, in terms of budgeting, we're more or less there. Um, players, our players, potential new recruits, that, that's ongoing all the time. Um, closure of the window last week was very welcome. Um, removed some of the risks in terms of outgoing players and any um, any threat from that perspective. And obviously now it's focused on Saturday and finishing the season as strong as we can. But yeah, to answer your question, plenty of irons in the fire. Uh, I mean, the work behind the scenes... Um, uh, whenever this season comes to an end uh, is ongoing, obviously for the off-season and, and for pre-season. We've already got a, a number of pre-season friendlies lined up that will likely get communicated in the coming weeks. Um, and Mark and I especially have spent some time trying to sort out quite a fun overseas trip for a friendly, uh, which hopefully we can pull that one off. It's not quite ready to announce yet, but yeah, it will be, uh, it will be as soon as we can. So yeah, plen plenty on the go. Um, everyone talks about having a rest when the season finishes. That never happens. It might even be busier than during the season. But yeah, it's uh, it's a nice. Uh, all this uh, uncertainty is a nice thing to have at this time of season. That sounds very exciting, particularly the potential uh, overseas uh, trip. Uh, so there's lots and lots of exciting things uh, to look forward to for every Ulti uh, fan in the coming days, weeks and, and, and months. Are there any final messages uh, from uh, from you folks to, to wrap things up from all of you? All of you? Um, well, just one thing, uh, backing up what JG has, JC has just confirmed on the tickets, it's going to be our biggest crowd for many, many years. Um, we're just finalising plans to make sure there's catering in every section of the ground because we've got more segregation than we normally have, which fans won't be used to. Um, and just to say, uh, we need the fans to get in early. We don't want big queues outside. You know, we're expecting a big bumper crowd. So get yourselves inside the fan zones open. Obviously, um, we're going to have catering and, uh, and available on every corner of the ground. So just a message, please get yourselves in early. Thank you. Yeah, buy, buy your tickets early as well because I, I'm convinced it will it will sell out. So uh, a few hundred remaining. Uh, we will promote that as well. You know, be, be more emails going out. Uh, you got behind us fantastically well over the the course of the last few months and, and well, the last couple of years, really. But um, 
yeah, please please buy early. It gives us a it gives us an idea of what what to expect on match day. Now, from my side, I mean, listen, the early you can get in just to make the noise and to set the the tone, like you know, the message that will be given how the players will be to you know outwork, outplay, and so on. I want us to outsing the Halifax fans as well. I know this this the stadium is going to be segmented. It's, it's it's kind of what you know Premier League stadiums and so on have to do. We we've got no option here, but uh, please be patient with everybody. Whether it's turnstiles, whether it's stewards, and so on, it's it's going to be a challenge for everybody. But hey, let's make it. Hopefully, we can make it an enjoyable one and uh, have a successful day on and off the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. If I just echo okay, Rob, there, come enjoy, be present, supporters, make a memory, and and just take take something from it. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic day. Like like it really is going to be. I, I'm getting goosebumps now. So come and join us it, Just and enjoy every moment. Make a memory. Bring bring your grandson, bring your grandfather. You know, honestly, grandmother, granddaughter, everybody, just come. It's going to be really good. Really, really great day. Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of people feeling like uh, you, Sam. I spoke to a few people uh, at the Notts County uh, game and a few of them said they're actually feeling sick about uh, a Saturday. Sick with ex excitement, though. So that's a, a positive, <laughs> uh, a positive uh, thing. So thanks, uh, thanks, Sam, Mark, John, and Rob for updating us on the very exciting uh, series of events that uh, will take place at the club in the run up to the end of the season and our plans for next season. Um, of course, the, all our focus at the moment is is on Saturday's huge, huge game. And to finish this YouTube premiere, we're going to look forward to Saturday's uh, FA Trophy semi-final with an interview with uh, Phil Parkinson, Altrian manager, and the Rottweiler, Isaac Marriott. <laughs> It's a huge week for Altrincham Football Club as we build up to the uh, Isuzu FA Trophy semi-final tie against FC Halifax Town on uh, Saturday. And we're talking to Phil Parkinson and Isaac uh, Marriott. Uh, Phil, big, big game on Saturday. But first of all, we've got some very important uh, news that uh, I know you're going to share with us and be delighted to share. Yeah, some great news, something I'm delighted to announce and tell everybody. Um, one of our brightest prospects this season, young Isaac here, has decided to sign an extension to his contract, which shows his commitment to the football club. It's just reward for a fantastic season that he's had so far. And uh, there's no player that deserves more than a new contract than Isaac. So absolutely delighted that he's pledged his future to the club. And, and tell us the story of, of, of Isaac's uh, signing, because he, he was a player that you'd had on the radar for a long time. Yeah, I'm sure he'll tell you all about it himself, but Isaac come to us from Huddersfield. He came on trial, I think it was, to start with, wasn't it? So we could look at him. Um, kicking myself, I didn't follow my gut instinct at the time and take him straight away. But as soon as I saw him, I think it was at Manchester Health Academy, he came into a group who he'd never met before and he was ordering people around on the pitch. So them leadership qualities were there. He was like, a, I call him a Yorkshire Terrier, don't I? But he was everywhere around the park. And it was just, we had, we had a, hey, we've always had a good team here and we had a real good team at that point. The midfield was strong and it was just, was it too early for him? It, it certainly wasn't. I should have made the call there and then, but fortunately for Isaac, the way he went about his business, it didn't affect him. He went on to Bradford Park Avenue, wasn't it? Scored loads of goals. I think he almost played as a 10 at times, which uh, he's great to see. He's versatile enough to be able to do that. But I always saw him as a, a deeper line midfielder or an eight, um, a box-to-box. -box. He can do either of them or all three of them roles equally well. So when the opportunity came around, I think it was pre-season, we played against you, didn't we? And um, I sort of grabbed him round the neck and I made sure that we were getting him as soon as we could at the next available opportunity. And Isaac, when, when you joined uh, Old T, it was just before a big game against Stockport County. You did actually come on for a few minutes in that game. Did actually clear one off the line, which was uh, a positive uh, start and not a very good uh, day for Altrincham Football Club. And unfortunately, in your first game, after a bright 20 minutes, you, you got injured against uh, Wrexham. But once you got into the side on a regular basis, you settled in very quickly. Well, yeah, I remember that first game against Wrexham. Um, super, you know, looking forward to it, really excited um, and unfortunately picked up a little quad injury that put me out for about three weeks and then when I come back in, obviously I wasn't going to go in straight away, I had to buy my time again and I actually remember <laughs> we played Solihull away 
um, my first start back and we actually got beat 5-0 and then um, I was back out of the team for a bit and then I knew I had I think we played Dagenham at home and won 3-0 and I remember getting assist and from that from that point forward um, I thought I really kicked on and was a mainstay in, in the team up until the end of the season. And from that point, it was pretty well plain sailing. Immediately, you were very popular popular with the uh, fans. And you must be delighted with the, the consistency of your performance level. Yeah, I mean, last year, I think um, I was playing in a, a little bit of a different role, more box-to-box, um, trying to get goals. I know my first goal come here, come here last year, and um, I was looking to add add more of that to my game. And I felt like the more I played in the team, it was, it was a team that didn't change much, so... There was a lot of confidence going around the team and bonding with other players. And yeah, I just felt like I picked from strength to strength and then uh, till that into the off-season. And when we when you joined, you spoke about the different positions that you could play in and you've been very, you've pretty well played in the same position throughout your career at Altrincham. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when uh, the Gaff said I played 10 for Bradford, um, in that role there, they wanted me to start the press higher, which is a lot of my game. And when I come here, we we have more of the ball and stuff. So it just suited me to a tee, just to play a bit further back and control things from there. And this season, uh, we've had our ups and downs. Uh, first win of the season after 10 games. But overall, it's been a really, really good, positive season. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, around, uh, when, well, obviously I've been injured at the start of this season which wasn't which wasn't easy looking on from the sides but the performances were always there um, and you know we kept a good group together and we knew once we got that first win we'd get more and more and um, thankfully when I've come back into the team it's just it's just been a case of onwards and upwards and yeah we've had as as blitz but we've had a rollover of players as everyone knows but um, credit to the gaffer and the players we've we've stuck together and we've got through it and now we're a much better stronger team. And uh, how easy was it to, to decide to extend your time at Altrincham? Um, yeah, pretty much a no-brainer, if I must say so. I mean, I enjoy playing here week in, week out, and I feel like my game's grown um, ever so much since I first come in. I feel like I'm getting stronger and stronger, confident as ever. And, um, yeah, I feel like I can just keep building and kicking on. And the move to full-time uh, football, that would have been very important for somebody who's been a full-time footballer previously so that's a development for the football club which has been really successfully uh, managed would have been an important part in making your decision yeah massive I mean as you can tell this season we've we've kicked on again um, from last from being obviously part-time to full-time obviously being in and around the lads every day it makes a massive difference and you know we can work um, on a lot of things in the training ground and stuff so yeah I feel like that's helped massively and Obviously, going into next season, we'll bond more as a team and going into um, the season after, it's just going to get better and better. And Saturday, it's a huge game against uh, Halifax uh, Town. One step away from uh, Wembley. Uh, What does that feel like? I mean, it's, you know, not many players can say that they've played at Wembley. I mean, it's a once in a career sort of thing sort of opportunity so yeah I'm I'm really looking forward to Saturday I mean the crowd already looks like it's going to be a sellout so I'm really looking forward to that and as long as they can get the behind the boys which I'm sure they will will um, hopefully do the business on the day I'm looking at the four semi-finalists uh, each team will think they've got a decent chance yeah definitely I mean as much as we fancy our chance against Halifax they will definitely fancy the chances against us and um at the end of the day, it's whoever whoever turns up on the day, and you know if we get to the final, we'll we'll fancy it as chances again, as will the other sides in the competition. And Phil, um, look, looking ahead to this semi final, of course, it's against Halifax Town, which is the team that you played against in the semi final for Nantwich Town back in uh, 2016, was it? Correct. Um, so <laughs> that's a, an interesting um, coincidence, uh, so so to speak. Um, but as a full-time club, I think we've always felt from the start of the season that the trophy might be there for us this year or a really good run in the trophy. Yeah, well, I felt right at the start of the season. It, it had the potential to be a real special season with the lads that we recruited. People like I, that were a young, ambitious, progressive team. And I think you're seeing that with regards to the results we've had this season, the position we are in the league, 
the the chance, as you said, to get to Wembley the first time is it 32 years that the club's been at this point. So it just shows how well this young group have done. And as you said, uh, a bit like history repeating itself with myself and Neil revisiting Halifax, but this time we have home field advantage. Um, we're in the same division where we were two divisions below them last time and we've got everything to play for and we're, we're desperate to get to Wembley. So all those things put together makes for a real interesting tie. As Isaac alluded to, we're very aware of the task in front of us. There's, there's no givens. It's, uh, there's, not, there's nothing between the four teams who are left in the competition. Everybody's equally able to beat each other, but we're very confident and that comes with having a young group, the, the fearless. They're desperate to forge their own little part of history in this proud club's history. So we've had a fantastic um, past in this competition, haven't we? Two, is it two FA Trophy wins? Um, different uh, journeys to Wembley on a number of different occasions that people would call the glory years. So hopefully this young group can bring the glory years back to Altrincham Football Club. And we need to win the battle on the pitch and we need to win the battle off the pitch. And what I mean by that is three o'clock Saturday when the players come out, five to three, we want 4,000 Altrincham fans cheering them on, really firing them up and, and, and for it to inspire the, the, the lads that are starting the game and, and, the, and the subs as well. Um, with the home pitch advantage, that is a big, big uh, thing for us. Uh, yeah, the most important thing in, in the draw for the semi-finals that, that we got a hand tie. Absolutely. Well, as I said, there's nothing between the four teams. Everybody was praying for a home tie because that's the biggest advantage you'll get. Can we take advantage of that will be the question. Um, we, we, we must. Our fans have got to make this um, feel like the biggest game in the club's history and I'm sure they will. It needs to be an electric environment. The players will certainly rise to it. It's not like they're, they're going to be um, shy of the occasion. They played in some really big games now, so obviously Notts County is the Wrexham's away, 10,000 people on the gate. They're, they're used to these occasions now, so they'll certainly rise to it. We've just got to make sure that we give them something to rise to. I'm going back uh, to you, Isaac. Uh, when you walk out of the tunnel on Saturday, look to your left at the uh, at the golf road, and um, I'm sure that's going to be a really inspirational experience for you. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, when the gaffer's going on about the away games at the Ten Thousand here at um, Wrexham and Notts Counties, I mean to have four thousand Altrincham fans here bellowing away. I know they've got a new song for me at the minute, which I'm I'm delighted with. Um, so yeah, I'll be looking forward to that and. Hopefully they can create, well, I know they will, create an amazing atmosphere for us. And whatever happens on uh, Saturday, it's been a, a, a really uh, good season. Altrincham Football Club is a club that has momentum, is on the rise, and we can only see good things happening in the next few years. I mean, yeah, that's why me committing um, to this extension is a no-brainer, because I just see the club going from strength to strength. And um, I see us, yeah, building and building each season, and hopefully we can really kick on. So that's the thoughts of uh, Isaac Marriott, who uh, has brought us the good news that he's uh, signed a new contract with Altrincham uh, Football Club and looking forward to this huge game on Saturday when Halifax Town visit the J. Davidson uh, Stadium. Wembley's at stake and we need uh, all 4,000 Altrincham fans in the stadium right behind us. <laughs> 